Hello, my name is Dr. Julian Novoa. I'm a practicing cosmetic OBGYN from El Paso, Texas. Today's lecture will cover the practical applications of tumescent anesthesia in the field of obstetrics and gynecology. General Concepts Tumescent anesthesia has been used in place of general anesthesia for procedures such as abdominoplasty, breast augmentation, facial surgery, liposuction, saphenous vein ablation, and vaginal aesthetic surgery. When performing each of these procedures, tumescent anesthesia has been found to be an incredibly safe and effective alternative to general anesthesia. What is tumescent anesthesia? Tumescent anesthesia is a technique using local lidocaine and epinephrine in a normal saline solution that maximizes safety while achieving extensive regional anesthesia of skin and subcutaneous tissues. The subcutaneous infiltration of tumescent lidocaine causes the targeted tissue to become swollen and firm or tumescent. This produces an almost immediate and sustained anesthetic effect without subjecting a patient to the inherent risks of general anesthesia or excessive blood loss. Tumescent anesthesia, also known as the Klein technique, was invented by Dr. Jeffrey Klein in the early 1980s. It was developed by Klein to perform liposuction without the need for general anesthesia. Since its creation, the Klein technique has been modified and used in surgical procedures in order to perform these procedures while the patient is awake or conscious and intentionally avoids the use of general anesthesia. Since its creation, the Klein technique has been modified and used in other cosmetic surgical procedures, such as the traditional abdominoplasty and lipoabdominoplasty, such as the Avalar, Gandhi, and Pelosi techniques, as well as breast augmentation surgery, better known as awake breast augmentation, and tumescent anesthetic breast surgery, also known as TABS. Tumescent anesthesia has also been used in conscious facial surgeries, as well as phlebectomy or endovenous laser therapy. Tumescent anesthesia is commonly used by the cosmetic OBGYN to avoid IV sedation and general anesthesia and procedures such as the incisional scar revision, which includes the umbilical, port site, and the traditional cesarean section scar revision, the labial majora and mounds pubis liposuction, nipple, umbilical, and vulvar body piercing, clitoral hood reduction, labioplasty, vaginal rejuvenation surgery, hymenoplasty, and perineoplasty, just to name a few. Although tumescent anesthesia has traditionally been reserved for the use in cosmetic procedures, Cosmetic gynecologists have incorporated its use in traditional procedures without the need for IV sedation or general anesthesia. These include the Bartholin cyst excisions, breast biopsy, cervical dilatation or DNC, implanon removal, labial or vaginal biopsy, laparoscopic port site infiltration, endometrial ablation anesthesia, episiotomy repair, pudendal and paracervical blocks, and as an adjunctive anesthesia for transvaginal hysterectomy in general anesthesia. Tumescent anesthesia safety record. The PDR states that the maximum lidocaine concentration is 7 mg per kilogram body weight. 
this continues to be the stated maximum amount for undiluted lidocaine. However, with the creation of the Klein technique, we have noted that when Lidocaine is combined with epinephrine and sodium bicarb and diluted in 500 to 1,000 milliliters of normal saline. The amount of lidocaine can be significantly increased, with the maximum lidocaine concentration being between 35 and 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Since the 1980s, in over half a million procedures, no deaths have been reported when using the Klein technique within the known safety parameters for each procedure. When using the Klein technique or tumescent anesthesia in subcutaneous and adipose tissue, such as conscious lipoabdominoplasty, with the most common procedures known as the Avalar, Gandhi, and Pelosi lipoabdominoplasty, the maximum lidocaine range is between 35 and 55 milligrams per kilogram body weight. When used in muscular and venous tissue, such as conscious phlebectomy or endovenous laser therapy, also known as saphenous vein ablation, the maximum lidocaine range is much lower at 4.5 to 7 milligrams per kilogram body weight. In awake breast augmentation and tumescent anesthetic breast surgery, also known as TABS, where the breast implants are placed in a submuscular plane, the maximum lidocaine range is between 35 and 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight, with the recommended range between 25 and 35 milligrams per kilogram body weight. The most common side effect associated with the use of tumescent anesthesia is transient lidocaine toxicity. When there is an unintentional bolus of tumescent anesthetic into the circulatory system, the three most common side effects are dry mouth, spontaneous cough, or metallic taste, with these symptoms lasting between 5 and 15 seconds and usually resolving spontaneously. Transient tachycardia occurring in up to 50% of patients is not an unusual finding and is associated with a side effect of the epinephrine in the tumescent anesthetic. This side effect usually lasts up to 30 minutes following the infiltration of tissue. Hypotension, nausea, and vomiting occurring in up to 2% of patients usually resolve spontaneously or may be hastened by the use of IV hydration bolus. The risk of sustained toxic effect or lidocaine overdose when following recommended safety parameters is extremely low. Over the past two years, we have added a second local anesthetic, neuropin, to our tumescent anesthetic preparations. We have found in our studies that the addition of neuropin or rapivacaine to the final 100 to 250 milliliters of tumescent solution significantly improves the duration of the anesthetic effect. The literature has shown that the half-life metabolism of lidocaine is approximately 2 hours, while that of neuropin is approximately 6 hours. There does not appear to be a competitive inhibition in the liver when these canes are used together in a tumescent anesthetic mixture. When preparing tumescent anesthetic volumes between 500 and 1,000 milliliters, the following should be considered. The standard size for a tumescent anesthetic solution is usually 1,000 milliliters. Take a bag of 1,000 milliliters of 0.9% normal saline and inject 1,500 milligrams of lidocaine, 3 milligrams of epinephrine, and 13 milliequivalents of sodium bicarb. When preparing a smaller size bag of 500 milliliters, take a bag of 500 milliliters of 0.9% normal saline and inject 750 milligrams of lidocaine. 1.5 milligrams of epinephrine and 7 milliequivalents of sodium bicarb. 
when using Tumescent anesthetic volumes between 100 and 500 milliliters, it is often easier to prepare the Tumescent solutions using bottles with premixed amounts of lidocaine, epinephrine, and sodium bicarbonate. For example, when using bottles of lidocaine of 1 or 2 percent with a 1 to 100,000 or 1 to 200,000 dilution of epinephrine, the bottles can be easily mixed with the preset amount of normal saline between 100 and 500 milliliters and this tumescent amount can be used in tissue and is well below the recommended 35 to 50 milligrams per kilogram body weight maximum laticate concentration. When preparing a tumescent solution of between 100 and 500 milliliters the following protocol and items are recommended. A 100 to 500 milliliter of 0.9 percent normal saline, a small basin of 100 to 500 milliliter size, a 60 milliliter syringe, one 18 gauge needle, one 20 gauge spinal needle six inches long, one bottle of 30 milliliters of one or two percent lidocaine containing 300 to 600 milligrams of lidocaine with epinephrine in a 1 to 100 or 1 to 200,000 dilution, and one bottle of 30 milliliters of 0.5% neuropin containing 150 milligrams of neuropin. Once you have your items, you should pour one bottle of 30 milliliters of lidocaine and one bottle of 30 milliliters of neuropin into your small basin and then pour the appropriate amount of normal saline from between 100 and 500 milliliters into the small basin to mix your tumescent solution. Once you have the specified concentration that you want, draw up the fluid into the 60 milliliter syringe and inject that fluid into your tissue using either the 18 gauge or the 20 gauge spinal needle. Caution. The original Klein formula is based on the dilution of laticane, epinephrine, and sodium bicarbonate in normal saline amounts between 500 and 1,000 milliliters. The dilution of these meds is critically important in maintaining the optimal effect as well as avoiding potential toxic side effects of undiluted laticane. It is better to use a higher volume of normal saline and discard the unused portion than to use a smaller amount of more concentrated tumescent laticane solution. Therefore, when preparing smaller tumescent solutions using premixed bottles of laticane with epinephrine and sodium bicarb, it is recommended that at least 100 milliliters of normal saline be used for each 30 milliliter bottle of premixed 1% lidocaine with epi and 100 milliliters for each 30 milliliter bottle of 0.5% neuropin. If considering using tumescent anesthesia in traditional OBGYN procedures without the assistance of IV sedation or general anesthesia, the following is recommended. In the case of cesarean section scar revision, it is recommended that you use between 250 and 1,000 milliliters of tumescent solution around and below the scar line. In the case of umbilical, standard laparoscopic, and da Vinci port sites, especially along lateral port sites, which are greater than 10 millimeters in size, it is recommended that you use 50 milliliters of tumescent solution per port site. With a Bartholin cyst excision, it is recommended that you use between 50 and 100 milliliters of tumescent solution around the excisable tissue. With a breast biopsy, it is also recommended that you use between 50 and 100 milliliters of tumescent solution. And in the case of a cervical dilatation or a DNC, 
it is recommended that you use between 50 and 100 milliliters of tumescent solution as a paracervical block. When using tumescent anesthetic and an endometrial ablation, it is recommended that this procedure be done in two steps. Step one, the use of between 50 and 100 milliliters of tumescent anesthetic around the cervix or as a paracervical block, followed by the infusion of 50 milliliters of tumescent anesthetic directly into the endometrial canal. With an episiotomy, it is recommended that you use between 100 and 250 milliliters of tumescent anesthetic infiltrated around and beneath the associated tissue depending on the degree and location of the episiotomy. With an implanon removal, and specifically with an improperly placed implanon which has embedded itself in either the fascia or directly into the muscle, it is recommended that you use between 25 and 50 milliliters of tumescent solution directly into the fascia and muscular tissue. With labial or vaginal biopsies, between 25 and 50 milliliters of tumescent solution should be infiltrated around the excisable tissue. With the use of a pedendal block, between 100 and 200 milliliters of tumescent solution should be used per side. Tumescent anesthesia can be very helpful when performing a total vaginal hysterectomy. With the use of between 50 and 100 milliliters of tumescent anesthetic infiltrated around the cervix or as a paracervical block. And the use of between 50 and 100 milliliters of additional tumescent anesthetic as a hydro separator of the bladder off of the cervix. This can significantly decrease the amount of blood loss from the vaginal cuff. Conclusions. Tumescent anesthesia has been used in conscious procedures since the 1980s. It has been found to be safe and effective in lidocaine concentrations as high as 55 milligrams per kilogram body weight. The duration of the anesthetic effect can be as high as six hours following surgery. The risks of infection and bleeding are reduced with tumescent anesthesia as compared to general anesthesia or IV sedation. Tumescent anesthesia provides a superior and longer lasting anesthetic effect as compared to local lidocaine and is an appropriate alternative to local IV sedation or general anesthesia for most OBGYN procedures. This completes our lecture for today. Thank you very much for your attention.